Okay, so this is the stash of stamp that I have so far. Uh, it is pretty, you know, they're pretty ch chunky, I won't lie. But what can you do? You know, we'll see if I can take all of these or not. Um, all right, that brings us on to the next um, toy that we have as mixed media artists and stencils. Well, my friends, this is the same issue as the stamps. I've got tons of stencils, so my technique is just do the same, is pick some old favorites that are pretty abstract and will go with anything, pretty much. And also pick some that maybe you just uh, bought recently and you haven't played much with. Um, yeah, so th that's my technique, pretty much. So let's go on to the stencils. I'll show you what I'll take. Obviously, I'm not going to take any of the large stencils, only the small ones. One uh, stuff that I will take without a doubt or hesitation is um, the Tim Holtz stencils because they're mostly textures and they go on so many things. Um, I've got some large ones but I also have a set of minis on a little uh, ring binder and I always take the whole pack. That way I've got heaps and heaps of choices here. Can't complain about that so I'll definitely take that. And then I'll go through my little basket of stencils here. Um, just like my stamps, I have them all in those little plastic storage pockets that you can find on our website too. Um, and I'll just pick a few of my favorites. At least stencils don't take a lot of space. And I'll also take um, some of the more recent ones that I just got. Or some textures that I love. So I can be a bit more, um, you know, have a little bit more of an allowance with stencils. So I'll take that one. This is the corn cob stencil by Crafters Workshop. And if you hear some noise in the background, it's just happy watering the plants before we go on holiday. <laughs> Something like that always works well. This is from Darkroom Door, the circles. Uh, let's see. I've got a few new ones or recent ones from um, Art by Marlene. So I may take some of those. I haven't used them a lot just yet. So again, I just flick through like that one. Uh, that was a stencil gold pattern, I think. I'll take um, another one by Amba Marlene. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but you know, you get the idea. Just go through your stash. Get a few that will work on everything. Little circles always work great. And anything that will work for background. So I won't go in detail too much here. Just have a quick look through. Uh, that works well and I won't even look through too much that way I won't remember what I've got <laughs> and I can't miss it if I don't know and then um, this also would be a good option um, the Faber Castell um, or Castell uh, paper stencils so this might be a bit chunky for what I'm going to do like that kind of pattern it's a bit big so not that one this one's got some uh, words, pretty cool, but maybe a bit big. But something like that would be good with lots of different textures if you haven't got any of the Tim Holtz um, stencils. Things like, you know, like that. So that could be an option. I'm not going to take those for now. Um, and then, quick look through. I think that will be it for the stencils. Looking through my supplies, I was just thinking um, these would be great as well instead of taking stamps like these if you find that these are a little bit chunky. Um, the Carabelle Studio texture plates that you use for gel printing and um, stamping and all of that. These would be great as well because they are very thin and you know, you can take a whole bunch. They're quite flexible. I don't have any packaging with them. So I could take just that instead if I wanted to and you know there's plenty to play with so I'll have a little think about those um, I won't take the round ones I have some square ones as well but a bit too big for this so I will leave those but um, I definitely want to take some of this is still that one it's still a new one so I'll take that and that one and that one and that one <laughs> no comments and that one and that one and that one okay well might as well just take them all this one I'll leave behind just, you know, just to say that I didn't take them all. <laughs> so maybe that. I think I'm going to need a second suitcase. <laughs> and um, 
just looking around at my studio, obviously there are other things I cannot take and that they probably are not convenient. Embossing powders, for instance, not convenient on while you're traveling. Uh, anything like Tombow markers, I'm going to leave behind. Watercolors, I'm going to leave behind. Um, even I think my Prima metallic accents that I adore so much, I think I will leave behind just because they are big palettes. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll just use my uh, metallic um, gel sticks instead to add a little shine, just because we have to compromise. Uh, what else I'll definitely not take? Um, you know, things like large tubs of medium. Obviously, I'm not going to take that, but I will put them in little pots instead. So I'll show you what I've done. Okay, mediums. Imagine taking this on the plane with you. <laughs> um, yeah, not convenient. So what I do is I put them in little plastic containers. All my mediums are in little plastic containers. Because at all times, even in my studio, I don't need that big pot right there. So what I do is I put them in little tubs like this. And that works just fine, at least for a few weeks or a little trip. And that's plenty to go about for a couple of weeks. That's even too much. But anyway, and then also have these little tubs. That screw on top of each other like this so I can just take whichever uh, one I like um, I've got art guard I've got some deco for transfer gel some texture paste transparent gloss some dinner weekly gel medium regular gel medium some gesso I would live without the gesso for a while that's not too bad and texture paste or modeling paste same thing um that takes a long time to dry if you don't have a hair dryer or a heat gun so again even though i love adding texture to my art journal pages i will not take that so the only medium i will take is um matte gel medium that's it pretty simple so that goes on the side next next are crayons so um oil pastels and crayons like the neo color 2 uh, some that I use a lot and this is my little well that's one of my tins of crayons this is usually the tin that, that I take with me everywhere but that takes a lot of room and I'm thinking I won't need all of those so I'm going to take just a few colors that I like um, and that I know go on everything that I do you know we know our own colors we know what we like to play with um, they definitely did not take a lot of space, so I won't worry too much about that. I'll take the little white here and this black one and maybe something in between. I basically don't want to take the whole tin, that's all. So I'll take those. And what else did I want to talk about? So one thing I will definitely not take is anything that's messy. So I mentioned the watercolor sprays. I will leave that. Anything like dilution inks, definitely not. I don't have time for cleaning my hands, uh, you know, for hours on end. Um, anything like liquid inks, um, acrylic liquid inks uh, as well. I will just leave behind. It's messy and if it breaks in your bag or in your suitcase, I mean, it's just a disaster. So let's not even go there. Um, just take things that you know will be just fine um, and will not give you any issues. Crayons, markers, um, acrylic paints, some stamps and stencils are pretty much most of what makes my art kit and a bit of ink, of course. Apart from one last thing, ta-da-da, and that is washi tape. All right, well, this is uh, my little collection of washi tape rolls plenty to play with some beautiful designs just love them all of course but I cannot take them all and even when I'm in uh, my art studio in general I do not need to have all these rolls with me who needs five meters of one singular design at all times on their art table it just takes space so what I do is I use uh, washi tape storage cards and that allows me to take all of these designs no need to choose with me um, I just need to do a couple more of them, but they look like this and they take hardly any room. So this is pretty much my entire collection here condensed into this. And I have, you know, I don't know how much I'd have, maybe at least a meter of each in there, apart from the ones I've already used up. But, you know, it's super easy to see all your washi tapes all your designs in one you know at a glance basically and you only take a little bit at a time because you're not going to need much you're just going to tear a few bits and pieces here and there um so two weeks would be just fine i won't use you know even half of this 
and another one that I started, this is what it looks like without this obviously, but it's just little plastic things and again they're in my store, you can grab them if you like them. Um, another one that I take is um, I do one of the cards with some double sided adhesive tape. So instead of taking a whole roll, um, this is a thicker one, but that, you know, instead of taking all of this, then I just take, um, it's fine, I haven't done the thick one just yet. I just wrap a little bit of this one on here. You know, I'll take, you know, as much as I think I may need. Just, a few, I go around a few times. I mean, I'm not going to be gluing a lot of stuff anyway, so. But then again, you know, you can, you can put quite a bit on there. Enough that you're not going to run out and get frustrated, let's say. <laughs> and then once I've gone a few times around, then I just um, cut it up. And that's all there is to it. And then I will probably add some regular sticky tape as well on here. Um, not so much for my art journals, but just because it comes in handy sometimes when you're traveling. And uh, that'll be it. Now I'm going to do one last round um, to make sure I've got everything that I want. I can already see something I forgot to tell you about. Metallic um, acrylic paints I love a lot. Iridescent. Instead of taking all the tubes, I've got them in little um, jars like this. That just There's only one lid at the top. And if I want to access the second one, I just unscrew the first jar. So that means that I'm forced to keep them closed at all times. So I will take those with me. And these are just little containers you can get in the you know, $2 shops. Um, so I'll take that as well, I think. And um, something you may be thinking of getting taking as well, an acrylic block. Well, it doesn't take that much space if you've got a skinny one like this. But I actually usually don't bother with them because... You know, I'll just be using my stem and pressing them into the ink pad and then onto my surface like this. So I can do without. And if you're really that desperate, um, you can always stick them on your phone <laughs> because that's a, your phone's actually a large glass surface. So the stems usually stick to that as well. And if not, um, sometimes with cling stems, especially even the top of an ink pad um, can work as a, you know, a little acrylic block basically. So... You have to think outside the box. Works just fine. Now, um, I will definitely take a small pair of scissors as well. They always come in handy. And then after that, I think that's pretty much it. I'll have one last look to make sure I've given you all the information I wanted to give you. Okay, uh, one more thing. If you like to add stickers and embellishments, that sort of thing, um, onto your pages, obviously you don't have to take the entire sticker book. You know, you could just grab some of the pages only. So, you know, some that speak to you, you know, you want to use at, you know, at the moment. And just put them either in one of those little plastic storage pockets, like this, or something like that, like a little zipper pouch. Um, so in here I had um, two of the die cut books by Art by Marlene, and each of the die cut books have two pages of the same design. I don't need to transport all of that. So I only just tore one page of each design out of the two books and that reduced the entire thing to just this and there's plenty in here for me to go about um, you know plenty of choices so I think I will take those and then anything like little stickers it's really up to you if you like to add stuff I've got plenty of little bits and pieces and die cuts and and whatnot and like words and shapes and all of that I think I'm not feeling it at the moment I sometimes take them but I will leave them for now, uh, behind. I will also leave anything that takes a long time to dry, as I've mentioned before, um, and that will include my liquid pearls and stickles, things like that. They take too long, so and I, I usually end up smudging something. So I will leave those behind, and what I'll do is if I want to add those accents with liquid pearls or metallics or anything like that, um, stickles, then I will add them when I get home. And, you know, finish the pages here instead of trying to complete everything in one uh, process. Okay, so um, let's do a little recap of everything that I'm thinking of taking and see how much I have. So let's go back roughly from the top, starting with uh, picking a surface you're going to be painting on. Um, I think I'm going to stick to 
the shipping tags that I've got here. Like some of them are sort of half started and some of them are blank on both sides. Even taking, you know, all of these that give me two, four, six, seven, um, eight, nine, ten. Ten pages I can do. I think that'll be enough for two weeks because I wouldn't do more than one a day and then I'll be traveling and doing other things the rest of the time. Now, if you've got the mini um, stencils by Tim Holtz like this, then, you know, you can add everything onto a little ring binder here. So they take hardly any room at all because they're all exactly the same space. Perfect. So that doesn't take much room. Then we've got the washi tape cards. Doesn't take much room. I can line them up on top of these. Um, and then we go on to stencils. Well, apart from those I just showed you. So I've, I picked a few of those. Again, they don't take too much room, but I still have three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to play with. Then we've got um, some of the embellishments. Again, this little pocket doesn't take much room. Let's see. Then we'll try to stack them up to see how much room, I'm, you know, what kind of bag I'm going to take. Then stamps, they're the ones that take, you know, a lot of room. So I'm taking all of these. So that's a lot of texture plates. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Um, you know, I'm reconsidering taking all of these here. I'm still going to take, I'll still go for these three because they're new and I've been playing with them a lot. Um, and I think I will just take the two that I know I use the most, which are these two, and that'll be enough. So, leave those behind. So we got that, we got that, and we got those. Then the larger sets of stamps. Okay, sorry, my camera died. <laughs> anyway, back in business. So stamps, you could just get them out of the pockets if you wanted to and add them all into a little box, for instance. Um, I think I'm going to have enough space to take them as they are here. So it's not too much, she says. <laughs> um, it is a little bit, but anyway. So this is how much I've got. Um, then I've got all of these little tubes of paint. It's starting to add up. And of course, my little crayons. So I'm just putting everything together so I can see how much stuff I have. And then I can move forward after that. My little ink pads. Uh, my larger ink pad. These iridescent paints. The gel medium. And then um, I've got my markers and pens. So I will not take the water brush. I don't think I'll need it. And I think that is pretty much it. So once you've got um, your little stash, you can't see everything there, but let me just reshuffle things. So this is my little stash. Uh, once you've got everything in front of you, well, you can decide what kind of a bag you're gonna take to put everything in it doesn't have to be anything fancy you could just put it all in a plastic bag if you wanted to if you really uh, don't have a lot of space with you but I think I'll have a little handbag or something like that or a cosmetic pouch um, something along these lines to put all of these in so I'm gonna go check what will fit all of that easily and then uh, we can take it from there Obviously, you could do it the other way around. Choose the bag first, then put as much as you need in there and be constrained in that way. But um, I don't like that. <laughs> Bad that I choose my bits first and then if really I can't fit it all into one little bag, then I'll have to trim it down, but I really don't want to. Okay, back in a second. Okay, this, this is the bag I was thinking of taking. Um, it's an old handbag that I, I bought years ago. Not that old, but anyway. Uh, but the good thing about it is that it's got heaps of pockets everywhere in this thing. It's almost um, like a giant wallet in a way. It really has heaps of pockets and yeah, zippers and some more there. So it's really good for a little art bag. So I'm sure I'll be able to put everything in there pretty easily. I'm going to do that now and be quiet for a moment while I organize myself.
Okay, that's my bag mostly packed. I've decided not to take these little ink pads just because I think it's possible they may leak if they go upside down, which I'm sure they will. And I can live without them for now. So that leaves me with only one black ink pad, but that will be enough for what I need to do. And one last thing I forgot to mention, baby wipes. Who can live without them? I certainly can. I'm definitely gonna take this whole pack, but I will take probably, uh, you know, like, a few I will say let's try to get them out it's kind of difficult when you do it that way I've done better than this before if you take them a, little, a few at a time you should be able to get them out I think last time I actually ripped the pack open so it made it easier but we'll get there so take as many as you think you may need try to keep them you know fairly well folded they'll take less room if they're not all bunched up obviously so like that and then keep them nice and flat and then I just put them in a little ziplock bag that way I can still take them one at a time but I don't need to take the entire pack and that'll be plenty to last me for my whole trip I'll squeeze the air out and zip it up and you can go back in here all right I think that's everything I'm going to take with me that I can take without feeling too frustrated anyway um, so you saw me put the little crayons in here um, these I can place at the front here easy to find my little paint um, droppers sort of thing are in here. The uh, iridescent will just go on top. Some of the markers in here. There was a little pocket here, so I've put my um, uh, mixed media gel sticks in there. Pens, pens in there. My ink pad. Um, stamps. Um, medium will just stay on top. All the stamps, all the stencils and the texture plates. More stencils and my shipping tags are in front oops that came off are in front of the um, tim holtz um, stencils so they're all nice together and when i'm painting you know i can even just um, leave them on here as they are so that goes back in here that goes in here and the good thing about this bag is that i can still add my uh, passports and headphones and phone in the other pockets and um, that's just my handbag for the plane so I've got everything I need uh, maybe a Kindle in case I want to read and we're pretty much good to go my friends zip it all up and it doesn't take that much room right oh, look at this pocket can you imagine they used to have phones that fitted in there what the hell this is tiny nobody could put a phone in here these days we just have all these phablets um yeah and we yeah, like i said i am all good to go and all wrapped up i hope that's just giving you some ideas of what you can do you can see this bag is not you know it is a bit old but it'll do it doesn't matter for traveling um yeah i hope that you got a little bit of inspiration some ideas of how to downsize your art supplies if you're going traveling and one thing I will say is that instead of going through this old deal every time you go traveling um, I would recommend sort of um, either taking photos of your setup so before I go I may take pictures of how I've put everything in here what I've put in there that way I can grab everything else really quickly next time I go away or just keep everything in, not necessarily in this bag, because when you're in your studio, it's a little bit hard to grab. But put all of these, these essential supplies into one box on your art desk and leave everything else um, where it is. That way, if you need to go for the night or for a weekend, you just grab that box and it's already, um, you know, basically all your essentials. You don't have to think again and spend however long we went through um, to downsize. So that's it my friends, I hope this, uh, you found this helpful, 
and if you're on YouTube definitely put a thumbs up leave me a comment um, just to let me know if you've enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much bye guys